Hey everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And just to give a little bit of recap of what's going on, we are smack in the middle of planting season. We have all of our soybeans planted, a thousand acres is done. And so now we are in the middle of our corn planting season. We got a little ways in, then we got two inches of rain, so we've been rained out for the past few days. So we are back into the fields checking things out this morning to see if anything has started to come out of the ground yet. Unfortunately, I've discovered we have a little bit of crusting going on. Uh-oh, that's a crust. That is not what we want. That's bad because the corn can't grow through it. It's kind of like putting the ceiling right on top of the corn plant. And it just, if it gets too thick, it won't be able to make it through. So hopefully we get some nice soft rains here over the next couple days to be able to soften that up. So that way corn gets through. But this crust can be a pretty serious issue if it's not addressed. I'm currently in our first planted cornfield, which we call the North Farm. And digging around underneath the crust, I did find a few kernels and they are sprouting nicely. And within a couple days, they should be coming up out of the ground. Two miles north, I'm guessing we got probably got half an inch more rain than we got here. And then we go two miles south to dad's place. They probably got half an inch less than even what I got here. So we're hoping maybe later this afternoon we're going to be able to start doing some planting down around dad's place. In the last episode, I must not have added enough talc graphite mix to the 24-row John Deere planter from Van Wall. So I was having an issue with seed plugging up in the seed lines. And so I'd have to get out and shake them out and to get them unplugged like every 10 feet across the field. So we decided we were just going to end up draining the tanks on that planter. So that way we could just remix everything and then start fresh. I don't know why we've been having so much trouble with this gumming up, but we got plenty of talc on that. We're gonna put some more in talc graphite mix. Over the last few weeks, Ron, our bulldozer guy, has also been extremely busy at work reshaping a bunch of waterways. So down here at mom and dad's house at the main heated shop, he fixed the side of the ditch so that way we could actually get in there with the lawnmower instead of it being so steep. So Cooper's running around in the gator right now with the drag. He's getting everything nice and smooth so that way he can prepare it for grass seed. Do, 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 do. We got a little bit of seed on this yet. Hopefully, hopefully we can plant today if everything's drying out enough. But otherwise, we still want to be ready because if today won't go, I'm thinking tomorrow for sure. Hi, Ellie. Hi, girl. What are you doing? Hi, Ellie. Hi, girl. Hi. Conditions are getting kind of real close to running. We're going to take the 24 row, the white one. We're gonna set it in the ground here, run just a little bit without planting seed. In two days, they're talking several days of rain. And then after that, by the time it dries out, we're getting pretty stinking close to June and we'd like to have our corn in well before June. So it's so close right now. So we're, we just wanna make sure we don't have any sidewall compaction going on with the planter. If we do, it's gonna be a no-go. If it's good, we're gonna do a little planting tonight. And I'm gonna keep boundarying and and hopefully tomorrow we can hit it hard with both planters and then just get done. I'm doing two things right here. The first thing I'm doing is feeling the sidewall of the slit to see how hard it is. If it's really hard, that means we're compacting the side of it with the planter, which is bad. And then I'm also feeling just the moisture content of the soil itself. In the areas where we don't have any residue, like right here, this soil seems pretty nice. When we grab a nice handful of it, it breaks right apart. That is plenty good to go. But when we have an area that has residue, we reach down inside there and grab and we squeeze. It's just kind of balling together a little bit, especially when we get a little deeper down. Since I don't have a moisture tester, I'm just doing a quick and dirty method to see if the soil is fit or not. We just call this the ball test. We grab a handful of soil, we squeeze it as hard as we can, and then we just start to knead it around in our fingers. And if it starts to break apart into small pieces nice and easily, then we know we're good to go. But if it kind of stays conglomerated together in big chunks, we're too wet. Right here, it's kind of staying in a little bit bigger chunks than I would like to see. Well, what do you think? I'll leave it to you. Oh, they said we're not gonna finish, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna try 
try it first thing. It's just a hair too damp yet. Between both planters, it should be nothing for us to be able to do 600 acres in a day if we have a good solid running day of keeping the planters moving along, or as Dad would say, keeping them motating. But we'll see, we'll get what we get. The field around mom and dad's house here, we got all RTK'd up with the GPS mapping, got the bush farm over there, that's all done too. Hanson farm across the creek on that side, that's done. And we got the one west of the house all wrapped up. That farm, game changer. We're heading over to Uncle Orland's next. The field west of the house here and Uncle Orland's are both gonna be completely different farms because they have a snaking waterway system through them that looks kind of like your hand. And in the past, each individual piece was its own field. But now, you literally make a square around the outside of the field, and then you just go back and forth and fill in everything in between. So it is going to be night and day difference on both of these farms. Wah, D-U-N, done. Look at this. We cleaned up all our boundaries too. Cold fingers not working very good right now. Nice and simple. I'm not gonna lie, it's not exactly warm out right now. I'm not dressed correctly. <laughs> ah, feels better in here. For some reason our sensor's broken. You gotta hold the button, then the door goes down. Here we go, we're gonna try to get some planting done. It's about 7.30 this morning. They're talking rain starting at 10 o'clock tonight. So we're gonna plant as much as we can. Sounds like I left the key on on the 340 last night. So Cooper's not too happy because his battery died. So dad brought me some graphite. So we got some talc the other day and for some reason it didn't have any graphite in mixed with it. So we're gonna have to mix that together. That's not the seed that I need. Where's the one I need? We didn't put the lid off the one that we emptied the deer planter into yesterday. I think that one's still in here, unless dad grabbed it. That's the one we need. We're gonna plant that first, Champion 58A21. One of these days I need to be getting some more three inch rock right here. We have existing gravel underneath the white semi, but I would like to bring it all the way to the side of the big machine shed. So same thing, kind of right back there. That way when we're coming through here with semis and it's winter time, you can't fully see the driveway and then things start to thaw out. We're not accidentally going eight feet off to the side and then tracking a bunch of mud up onto the rock. Turn the little hand thingy on. Okay. Somebody turn the gas off, maybe? No, gas is on. Okay. That's weird, usually that fires right up. And this is supposed to fire it up too. There, see? That was weird. Okay, we're all filled up. I have the most talc and graphite I've ever had in a set of boxes before, so we're gonna be not plugging today. Well, I gotta do some work real quick. Hopefully he shuts this thing off. It'll about deaf in your ears. I gotta find some headphones. Now that I've ran a few acres through the deer planter, I'm just checking to make sure the closing wheels are centered over the furrow. A centered closing wheel looks like this, and sometimes the bolts can be a little loose or maybe a little paint wears or something, and then they can slide, and then they can be off to the side of the furrow, so that means it's not closing correctly, which is not what we want, because that would mess with our even seed to soil contact. So we wanna make sure we got these closed properly. So I'm just doing a quick check, making sure everything's centered up. I did end up finding a couple that were a little bit off kilter. I'm kind of glad we didn't go last night because it's still pretty tacky in some spots here. It's definitely getting better now. Cole's digging around looking for some kernels of corn. Can't find them when you're looking for them. No, they hide. Is it talc or that stuff we put in been helping? crap ton of it yeah my singulation's like 99.9 .9 to 100 pretty much all the time now so maybe that was affecting it earlier too kind of a thick spot here this is where you can see where the trash whippers they move the trash out of the way so the seed can get in the ground where it's supposed to what cole is doing right now he's going to each row there just making sure the bolts are tight. There was a couple that, oh, maybe we were just a little bit loose and we're not sure. Well, just up and down all day long can loosen things up. 
After this rain, a lot of in and out of the cab, just getting things kind of dialed in and adjusted because the soil's a completely different texture and stuff now. Just made it going a little bit. I noticed every time I would start, my row number two hydraulic pressure said it was low. I just hit the ignore button, you know, I was able to plant across the whole field, never came back again. I was looking at my singulation, not my down pressure. I think I've been making uh, quite a few rounds here with no down pressure in row number two. And that would explain why I have no mark with it on the ground with the row cleaner. As you can see, all the other ones are dark except row number two over there. I think another one of those valves is plugged up or something. So I'm, Dad's coming out with the screwdriver. I'm going to try to open it up. If that doesn't work, Van Wall's going to have to come back out and I guess put a new valve in. Here's this little thing right here. It's a little control valve. Yeah. Let's take a little screwdriver right in that little baby screw right there. We'll try cranking it open. Seeing if we can get some pressure into it. That's the valve they've had to replace a couple times. I basically just have it down and back left. Once we get this done, I might as well go up and help you get that sprayer going if it has to be replaced. Yeah, okay. The cranked up into manual mode. We're supposed to be putting down 436 pounds per row. All these ones are doing it. Row number two, we are not. So it sounds like Gary from Van Wall just got a hold of the crew. They got a bunch of guys working on planters right now. So as soon as one's free, we'll come out place that in the meantime i need to get that plot part sprayed it has no residual herbicide on it right now so i guess while we're close to home we might as well get the sprayer out and get that taken care of quick the beans are just starting to poke their heads out of the ground in a couple spots so it's probably about perfect timing i haven't had a day in this planter yet where i've been able to really get much of anything done I got the mix it all programmed into the tablet. We had one new chemical, which when I got looking on the tablet, we already have it, I guess. So that's ready to go. I got a couple of hand pour jugs. I'm gonna just bring up here. I need like eight gallons of it. That one's basically empty and I already have all my lines and stuff rinsed out. So I don't wanna just run around eight gallons into it. Have to re-rinse everything there. The back one's just a water conditioner. So I'll be using that one. I will not be using that back product. That is for solely soybeans. Hopefully John Deere guys will be here in a minute. Dad's getting lunch. And we probably got 30 minutes of spraying to do. Update on the birds on the sprayer. Looks like we got ourselves two eggs hiding right there. And we just washed this thing the other day. So they, how do they make them so fast? One thing about this seed, I don't think it seems like it wants to go up. You know, yeah, that, that one doesn't, oh, this one that I'm on, yeah. yeah. See, I like it all the way down, because you weigh more than me, and when I sit on it after you, then my legs fall asleep. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, that it isn't working, is it? Oh boy, Dad, you got some interesting looking rows right here. Interesting son, how he planted it. Each one of those little individual grooves represents the nozzle on the sprayer. So we got every 15 inches. So I think there's 71 nozzles across the entire boom that are on individual shutoffs. So it's pretty cool when you get to like a V that's already been sprayed on the outsides because then it just goes and then as you go back in, okay, here we go. Left side's gonna start shutting off here in a second. Just like that, look at that. He's working his way down. Whee! What, they send the new guy today? Uh, well, I don't know about that. Did you know this has a massage seat on it? Yeah, I usually turn them on every time I get in. Just yeah. It just feels good. I wish it would stay on longer though. Yeah, it runs for like 15 for minutes. 15 minutes and you gotta re turn it on yeah, same with the air condition air conditioned seat. seat yeah but it doesn't like freeze you out of the seat it's know? just it's first enough. world problem yeah just get a call from cooper he is about running out of seed and he needs fuel his tractor is super super low on fuel Well, we got Derek here. We're doing a little bit of messing with these row cleaners. We noticed that piece right there was getting hooked underneath that little lip on like four rows. And so that's probably why I wasn't getting as good of cleaning action as I wanted because it was getting caught under that and not letting it go up. We loosened them up, pulled them forward, got them tightened down. I think we're good to go and it looks like rain coming. Dave brought his backhoe out to behind grandpa's. There's a plug tile somewhere in there. So I guess he did some digging up, found it. He said it was gonna take a little while before it drained down because that thing was full full. But we're just doing what we can, playing around it. Yeah, it looks like you found it right there. 
I don't know. Dave knows what he's doing when it comes to that. I don't have the foggiest, to be honest. We got Cooper hiding right down there. He planted that 40 acre chunk right across the waterway the other day, just before the rain. He had like two rounds left when he got done. So I think he's just now wrapping that farm up. I got like 60 acres here left on grandpa's. I think Cooper's going to Uncle Orland's next. And then once I get down here, I'm gonna head down the road two miles and we're gonna go to the bush farm. So far, rain's holding off. We're gonna go as long as we can. Just two 60 foot planters passing each other out in the field. Nothing crazy about that. All nonchalant, totally normal. Woo. Just driving by a little bit ago with the pickup. Looks like some more of the uh, railing is coming down up there. So I suppose we better go up there and take that down before them pieces shoot off. If somebody was down there or a vehicle parked down there, chances are probably won't feel very good. So probably better go up and see if we can get them ripped down quick. I need to get back out in the field, but I seen that. Got to go over there. It's a long ways down there. Long ways down there. Whoa. It's always got to be careful. That's the number one thing. You get a great view up here though. Long ways down there. Long ways down there. Holy buckets. You would not want to fall between there or over there or down there, but we got to jump down there. Ugh. We got to go down there. I don't even want to go down there. If you don't know what's going on already, I would highly recommend you watch this video to catch yourself up to speed on what's going on around the bend side and why there's so much frustration built up in these next clips. I can't lie to you guys. This whole thing is very, very frustrating. Very frustrating. You, you just, I don't know. Sometimes I wish. It, it just mind boggles me how I actually almost hate even looking at this stuff anymore. I love the flag though. I love the flag. Daddy Cornstar, do you have any stress? Just one. Just one. Honestly. Just one. Neva just took me out for the getting the fuel trailer, but I want to have the camera with me because I'm going to follow her, and if she wipes out, I want to be able to film it. Thank you, Neva. They're talking maybe a little rain, and I wanted to get the fuel trailer out of the field just in case if it did rain. Update: We have outlined the entire field. We're on the long rows going back and forth now. It's starting to spit. So we can see we got the windshield wipers on. We got one in the back, we got one on the side, and we got one on the front. It's just kind of getting tacky enough now when we get into the areas that have already been planted. It's kind of sticking to the wheels and stuff. But where we're at right now in this no-till stuff, looking at it, I'm still seeing a little bit of dust coming from a couple rows every now and again if I hit an area that doesn't have much cover. So it shows it's not really sinking into the soil too much yet. So hopefully this sprinkle just kind of stays like this doesn't get any heavier ideally it'd be nice if it would stop but they're talking 100 percent chances of rain so i guess what we get done is what we get done if i can get empty of seed that would honestly be ideal here if it is going to continue to rain but we're just going to do what we can man it'd be nice to get done today but weather happens breakdowns happen this three windshield wiper thing is kind of trippy but we just ran out of seed and that side, row one to quit planting right at the end. <laughs> 